I'm Vijay Iyer. I'm a musician, composer, and professor at Harvard University. I want to introduce you to my colleague here, Yosvani Terry, senior lecturer in music here at Harvard and also the director of Harvard Jazz Bands. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Yosvani is a musician from Cuba. He's best known as a saxophonist and composer, but he is also a fantastic checkere player. So can you tell us about this instrument? Well, this instrument, checker, uh, which is also known as uh, adwe, uh, awe, is coming, the tradition that I, I learned from my father, who is considered one of the important, really a key player, like the king of the instrument in, in Cuba. Yes. Uh, he learned it from the Yoruba tradition, especially from his uncle, El Difunto Tanguito, that passed him all the great... Uh, his knowledge of the checker. Now my father took it somewhere else because then he added, he added it to the popular uh, form of Cuban music like the charanga style, mm -hmm. and he created a, even a, a genre, a, a style of music which he called ritmo widow, mm -hmm. uh, and um, it's, it's I mean it's an it's an incredible instrument that is could be deceiving because it's it looks really easy to play. <laughs> but then once you get it in your hand, you're like trying to figure it out. And it, there's so much that you can't get out of it because it can really help glue uh, many rhythms at the same time or like a rhythm session uh, feel. And also it really helped bring things together. I mean, when you when you hear my father and he taught us when we were really little and uh, uh, it, it was uh, really important that at some point he said, you know, you need to learn the instrument. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't know because he said the instrument's going to feed you at some point. <laughs> so <laughs> now and it's uh, made from a vegetable, right? It's it is, yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a natural gourd. And uh, actually, though the tradition comes from West Africa, and you can find the gourd and gourds in many countries in the world, this one specifically was born in South Carolina. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, I mean... It's there's so many things that it could be used for as a storage, to storage of food, water, yes. and different things. Yes. And um, there is many different uh, techniques to play it. And I think that the, my father's invention was to hold it in this position and then create a lot of uh, possibilities and also virtuoso type of uh, approach to the instrument, mm -hmm. which you can do. As m I mean, things that you cannot imagine. Mm. Once you see him playing, it's like, oh, yeah, that absolutely. could be done in that instrument. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, you, you said that this comes from West Africa, so it's featured in music from all over the continent. Then, is that mm -hmm. true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's featured in the music from all over the continent, and like I said, you can find it in Ethiopia, in Benin, in Nigeria, in Congo. And 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 in all of these places, it's it always has a different way. Uh, people play it differently, and also the result is completely different. And these like different techniques. Some some of them like dress it with a long tail, in which they have a different way of playing it by pulling the the tail. Mm. Uh, in Africa, they also dress it with curry shells mm -hmm. and. Uh, which in Cuba we have a different tradition to dress it with uh, a seed that we call mate. Mm. Mm. And, uh, but here, this is like the latest way, latest way to, to do it. We use different beats and then with all these beats we can recreate a lot of different patterns. Yes. For, for instance, this pattern represents the double axe from Chango, who was wow. one of the important kings uh, within the Yoruba tradition. And you know, he, those are the colors that color that represent they present him. Wow. And the instrument, I was going to say, is really, you really need to learn how to dance with it. Yes. In order to play, and especially how to produce, I mean, the, how, how the sound origin, mm -hmm. and how the relationship that of that, move, that movement uh, is what really changed and influenced what we call the feel. Of the group, mm -hmm. so uh, if you learn how to dance with it, then you can really uh, put a good group in different in different places. And uh, 
So it's it's a whole different way, and I, I, it's just something that is really related with all the African traditions, yeah. African musical traditions, in which you need to feel it in your body. You need to, you know, once you feel it, then you can play it, and then you can make other people dance. Yes. So um, if you if if you see somebody playing, it's normal, and to see that how, you know, the 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 the. The, the the sound don't just start right, right here they start right from the body right. and uh, I'll give you an example Like, <laughs> <That's great>. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was gonna say, it's like if I cannot feel it in my body, if I don't let the whole uh, movement travel from my body into the instrument, yes. then it becomes something different. Yes. Yeah. So the way we communicate an internal rhythm through the instrument is by actually feeling it ourselves. And then everything we do on the instrument reflects that feeling. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. So sir. then when I hear you doing it, then I somehow feel what you're feeling. It's some kind of empathy that's happening. Is that, that what you're saying? That is exactly. And, uh, and yeah, that's the, that's the whole principle behind the instrument. Yeah. You have to bring it out, feeling it, and then you transmit it to, uh, to other people. Well, this is exactly what I was talking about in the previous part of the lecture, was that... Uh, Music comes from bodily action and from uh, the way that we're able to hear each other's movement. But you're getting at something even deeper, which is that through hearing each other's movements, we hear something about what's happening inside that person. And that's a pretty profound uh, insight about how music works, I think. Yeah. And it's almost a spiritual insight. And that's what I was going to uh, suggest. That, that I, th I believe that comes from the the spiritual side of the music in which uh, the instrument is also it's meant to speak and it's meant to communicate uh, and it meant to be the voice of the orishas and of the different deities from the religious pantheon. So uh, that's the goal of any percussion player or yeah. any person that is going to approach the instrument. It's like to learn how to make the instrument speak. So can you think back to the process of learning how to play it? And what did you have to learn how to do exactly? Is with this instrument is 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 very is very uh, there's certain things specific because you need to learn hands coordination. My father was really adamant in teaching of first teaching of first how to play the instrument without the net. Mm. Because he knew then the implications of when you play with a net and you mm. need to learn how to time it. Mm. So he just first taught us how to play with a, without the net. And then when we started getting all the uh, hands coordination, then he added the, the net. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then by then we were already feeling uh, strong. It, made it, it makes a sound without it, though, right? You yeah. Could, uh, I wish I had a one without the net so uh, you could hear yeah. so what it sounds. It's a deep. Yeah, because they, you can hear the, 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 tone. the tone. Some of them, like the bigger, they have like really uh, a deep tone. Yes. And um, then, by then, I mean, we were, I mean, the, the sound production was the same because it was coming uh, from the same movements. Hmm. And let me see if I remember. There was some, uh, something that we would, uh, would, start, uh, would learn at the beginning that was like this. Was like this. Even though 
you're dancing almost against the instrument, mm. but it's just like, uh, it's more of a polyrhythm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also like a rhythmic conversation too. Yes. Because by understanding how your body works, it, it helps you to lock mm -hmm. with the instrument and it also helps you to not to fall off the groove. Yeah. So uh, it's, there's a, it's a direct connection. If I have to play the instrument like this, it would be it would be really uh, confusing because mm. then you couldn't really lock with the instrument and mm -hmm. you couldn't really lock with everything that is happening in your surround. Mm. Therefore, making it more uh, difficult to create a, mm -hmm. a, an interplane or conversation with the other musicians. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, I mean, the, just the root of the sound production is so tied to the body that mm. it's 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 it's. It's mandatory. Yes, to play. yes, yes. Yeah. And yeah. also, it's interesting how it involves gravity mm -hmm. and um, ballistics. You know, the, just the fact that you're you're actually throwing it mm -hmm. back and forth. You're not just tapping on it, right? Yeah. So you have to deal with the timing of the way objects, f you know, fly, <laughs> like right? or fall. How things yeah. fall. How things fall. You have to learn about just a basic. Um, fact of your environment is gravity, right? You have to mm -hmm. learn, this is a way of learning about falling and about catching. Yeah, 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 you have to learn and you have to learn how to balance all of that Yes. within the context of the group. Yeah. So it's a, it's about, you, let's say you, And it's a, it's a challenge. It's it a challenge. It's a, um, the, there's such a, an elastic quality be, be behind interpretation of the rhythm that it's impossible to capture on, on, on with the you know the Western European uh, way to write this. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, it's it's um, how can I put it? It's something that you learn and it's part of the language mm -hmm. and uh, and actually that's that's the part that takes it harder because that's the super detail mm. that that is what really glue everything together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you let's say I give you an example I'll give you a sample a triplet a, a regular triplet is Now this triplet could be done in so many different ways. Now, once you understand that the, that quality, that uh, that what make that's actually what give the the flavor, and that's actually what give the 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 the. Well, yes. I mean, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this topic and thinking about how we can talk about it. It has so much to do with relationships, right? With how. Uh, you know, somehow when you stretch the time, it's not um, killing the time, right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. The time is still strong and steady. So it's about how you are able to sort of feel two things at once. One is the strength of, and regularity of the pulse. And the other is uh, the way things fall against it. It's sort of about the interaction between the body in real space and this abstract, what almost an abstract concept of the pulse. So, it, you know, I, 
I know, like you said, you can't just slow it down to figure it out because, and partly it's because things fall as they fall. You can't throw it slower, right? No. <laughs> you can't. No. It won't. You can't make it fall it's more real, slowly. It's, it's real just time. Gonna, yeah, it's real time. Yeah. So it's about dealing with what really happens, not with some abstraction about what's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. That seems like that has a lot to do with it. It's um, it's about how people actually relate, and then that's when it's not about what's on the page or in the composition. It's about the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I don't agree. It's, that's what uh, that, yeah, that that's that's uh, in the big scale. It's like it's understanding freedom. Yes, it <laughs> is. <laughs> it is. You know what we were talking about in the first part of this is about the relationship of the what's called the mind to the body, and the, really understanding that it's all one system, and not even just one in, internal system, but one system that involves the connection between the mind and the body and the world around you, which has to do with how you interact with the environment. So that sensation and action um, are all one system. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you've really demonstrated that very well in, in the way that this instrument sort of encapsulates that truth about who we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, such a special yeah, it's a special thing. It's funny when people talk about it. They, th uh, it sounds, it may sound to somebody who's not experienced it, like a fantasy or like a kind of um, science fiction or something, <laughs> or or something kind of uh, flaky, you know, that people might have a hard time believing. But you've experienced it. I've experienced it. It's a real. It's real. It is real. It In is fact, real. I think it's biologically real. It's actually something that our bodies do together. Uh, and so music gives us access to that. Mm -hmm. To that, um, Because it's about how what we have in common, you know? It's about how we communicate through... We use these instruments to deliver some sense of what's happening internally to everyone around us. And then they feel it too, like you said. And then we feel them feeling it, right? You can hear them connecting with you. You really can. It's mm -hmm. not a. It's not sort of like imaginary. No, no. It really it's happens. Not. It's right? not. It's not. It's not. <coughs> and uh, and it really affects your decision. Uh, See, I'm saying all this because this is a series on science and music. And what I'm saying is that this is science right here. It is. <laughs> it is. It, 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 it is. is. It is. For, for me, say, it's a. Uh, it's a profound belief yeah. in music and science. It's a, I mean, there's no question. In yeah. that. And I always try to explain to people from, from, from where I'm coming from and from the different traditions that I was born and how it, uh, how it really uh, affects the way I look and I hear music and the way I, I really feel and interact with music and with people. Yeah, um, yeah that's a... Yeah, this is a part of my life. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, this has been beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all this with us. Thanks to you, and uh, yeah, let's make more music. Maybe we could try something right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll try. Yeah. See what I can do. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to keep up with you. Let's do something. <laughs> all right. <laughs>